everybody, I'm back with another episode in my Makeup Artist series. I keep finding ones that I want to film and I keep getting asked to continue the series by those that are watching. So I thought, well, let's continue the series. I think this is going to be episode eight. And today I'm gonna to talk all about my bases that I carry in my kit. So basically my foundations and my concealers. Everything of my foundations and concealers in this clear plastic, like little train cosmetic case. This one is Tartan and Twine. I got it at Ulta. I think it was like 12 or $18, something like that. But you can find them everywhere. Um, I know BH Cosmetics sells some, and I know you can also get them at Nigel's and Namie's, a large assortment. But this is perfect for me. I like to have my foundations and concealers standing up versus, um, on their side and a lot of them are glass containers and I feel that it helps not like rub against each other as much and it just seems to work better for me. So I have since stopped carrying my bases in my Zuka. Now I'll keep them in this bag and carry them in my set bag just because they got to be too overwhelming and this makes me feel like they're safer. So I don't know that I'm necessarily going to go in any kind of order. I'm just going to show you what I carry in this bag. You by no means need this much foundation and concealer in your kit. If you are just starting out and you're trying to budget while like starting your kit and building your kit, don't you don't have to do this. I've been doing this for a while. I've found what I feel like I need in my kit and what works best on my clients and that's what I stock. So right now I do have five different foundations that I carry. One of them is actually drugstore and it's the only drugstore foundation that I will really use on myself and or my clients. It's just the best quality I've found. So I'll start out with that. L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte. Um, I find that this works wonderfully on very oily skin. It really is a long wearing foundation. It mixes well with a lot of other foundations. So if you have someone who's just kind of oily and you don't want it to maybe look as cakey or obvious, you can easily mix this with something that's a little more luminous and it's a beautiful coverage. Now, as far as colors on my foundations, I tend to buy between three and five colors in each foundation brand that I own, and then I just mix and match. You do not need every color in a foundation. You could probably start out with three to four colors in your foundation and mix and match and be fine, and also get some other things that I'm gonna talk about to help mix in with your foundations to customize the color. Um, do not get every, just don't get every shade. If you primarily work on lighter skin Caucasian people, then tend to get those with maybe one dark shade. If you prim primarily work on more ethnic or African American people, get the darker shades with maybe one lighter shade. You just have to decide what works best for you and then get the few shades that will work best in that range. For me on the L'Oreal Infallible, I carry 104, 102, 107, and 112. I've never had an issue when I use that foundation matching it to one of my clients with those four shades. Another more, these next two foundations aren't as matte. I would say the L'Oreal Infallible is the most matte in my kit. The next two I'm going to talk about are kind of like demi-matte or even like a satin, but they're both very long wearing. I tend to pick very long wearing foundations because I mainly work um, on weddings or event makeup where I need that foundation to last all day long. If you if you primarily work in like film and photo shoots, you can pick a foundation that may not be as long wearing and it's more appropriate for film because you're not going, you don't have to have it last all day long. You're going to be there the entire time to do touch up. For me, I just need a long lasting foundation for like 90% of my work. So the next this is like a medium coverage. The L'Oreal Infallible was um, to me a full coverage. This is more of a medium coverage, but you can build it. And it is more of like, a, again, it's not completely matte, but it is one of the longest wearing that I carry. And it's my MAC Pro Long Wear Foundation. Um, I, you know, a lot of people carry the Studio Fix, Studio Skin Foundation. I don't even know what it's called. The other MAC foundation that they carry a lot of them carry that. I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, it smells like paint thinner and 
I don't know. I just, there's something about it that I'm just not in love with. And this I love because it does not have that smell. It is super long lasting and it doesn't look like a mask when you put it on your face. Um, and it also comes with a built-in pump, which the other one does not. So I do like, I only carry three shades in the Pro Long Wear. I have NC25, NC37, and NC50. Now this looks very dark and can look kind of scary. And you might be thinking, well, if you don't work on a lot of African-American skin, why do you have that? This is actually perfect to put one pump in with another color for your heavily spray tanned clients. Um, it's got the perfect undertone to it and it just seems to work all across the board every time I eat. The next foundation is also extremely long wearing, but it is more of a natural finish. Um, its sister foundation in the line is extremely matte and can sometimes feel and look cakey, but this one does not. It's very natural. And this is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light Stay in Place Makeup. I have three colors in this. I have Intensity 1, Intensity 2, and Intensity 3. The majority of my clients wear Intensity 3, and I probably need to get like a 4 and a 5. Um, I really like this. I think it's perfect for bridal. I think it's perfect for mother of the brides. Um, it's great for people who say, come to you and say, I don't usually wear a lot of makeup. Okay. You will hear that all the time. I don't normally wear a lot of makeup. I want a natural look. Okay. You need to, as an artist, you need to really kind of figure out what that fine line is between natural look and being made up because a natural look to me is completely different than a natural look to someone who doesn't wear makeup. But this is a foundation that I like to use a lot on the people that say, I don't normally wear makeup. I want something that's gonna last a long time. I have combination to oily skin. This is what I'm going to use. Come to me and they say, I don't normally wear makeup. Um, I have mature skin. I have really dry skin. I don't have a problem with my foundation lasting. Um, I like a dewy look. This is the foundation I use. And I've talked about this so much, but it's the MAC Face and Body Foundation. Um, this, if you do a lot of photo shoots, this is the foundation I would suggest out of all the ones that I have, this and one more. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. I use it on my male clients. The colors N3, N5, C2, and C5. So those, I carry four of the MAC Face and Body. Again, I love, love, love to use that on older clients. If you ever do a grandmother of the bride, I mean, it's the perfect foundation. It's so amazing. And I only apply that with my fingers. It's the best way I have found to apply the MAC Face and Body. If I'm using it on a man, I'll use like a small duo fiber brush. But if I'm using it on a female client, I use my fingers for that. Okay, so I only have one other foundation that I carry in my kit. And this is the most recent foundation that I've started to carry and it's for um, people who have normal skin or dry skin. I will not use this on an oily client because it will not last all day. If they have normal to dry skin, it will and it just gives an absolutely beautiful finish and it's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have the colors 4.5, 5.5 and 8 in this foundation. Um, I probably will pick up some more colors eventually but this just, I can't, I just can't say how much I love this for normal to dry skin. Don't even try it on oily skin. It's not going to work. I said five foundations. I really meant six because I have some of these left over. Um, this is what I originally started my kit with. And this is the first foundation that I ever um, stocked in my kit. So it holds a special place in my heart, but I am kind of dwindling it down. I'm running out of my bottles and I'm not restocking as much right now but it's the Face Atelier Pro Foundation. Now, I got these off the Face Atelier website. I do have a pro discount from that. Again, do not buy anything if you're an artist without checking to make sure they have a pro discount first. And they come, the pro bottles come in these nice plastic pump bottles, very small and space saving for your kit. Um, and I, right now, have the colors one and four. I did have one, four, seven, and 11, um, but I ran out of seven and 11. This, to me, is, perfectly suited for dry skin. It's a very dewy foundation. Um, it does last a while if you have dry skin. I just don't particularly like to use it on oily skin clients. However, this is one of the ones that works beautifully and magically with the L'Oreal um, Infallible Pro Matte as a mixture. So if you want something that's just a little more dewy, not near as flat and matte as the L'Oreal Infallible, then mix some of this in and it's 
it's like a perfect combination. This is a foundation palette. I don't find myself using it a ton, but I do, I probably should use it more. It's the Graftobian Warm Palette number one. And it's just a cream foundation. I am not a huge fan of cream foundation. I think if you work more in photo and film, um, you tend to use more creams. I just don't think that they sit as well on the clients that I use, but I do, if I'm gonna pick a cream foundation, this is my favorite formula, the Graftobian formula. So I do use, tend to use these for like highlighting too, some of these lighter shades um, and concealing because some of these are really good shades for actual concealer and they're not as dry as some cream concealers tend to be. Talking about concealers, I mainly carry two kinds of concealers in my kit and don't find that I really need any other ones. My favorite, really personally and for a kit, is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. And this one is halfway gone, but um, I carry the colors NW20, NW25, and NC42. The reason I carry NW20 and NW25, the in the NW is even though that a lot of my clients are yellow based, I feel under the eyes the NW is the best because it does have a little bit of a pink undertone, which also cancels out darkness. So you're kind of getting a two in one in that. So this is amazing. I, you know, people complain about the pump for personal use, but it's essential. Um, for artists because I see so many people online doing tutorials as a makeup artist and it makes me cringe. They're using like NARS Radiant Concealer and they'll put that wand directly onto the people's face. Not giving them the concealer and using that on somebody else oh, it makes me so mad. It's so cross-contaminating and that's, in my opinion, why MAC puts this in a pump is to cater to the professional people knowing that it's the most sanitary way to do it. The other concealer I use and really enjoy in my kit is the Makeup Forever HD Concealer. Again, very makeup artist friendly because it comes in a tube. You can just put it out on your palette and use it from that. You don't have to directly apply it to the face. I carry Y23, Y41, and Y31 in these concealers. I don't find that they're as waterproof or long lasting as the Pro Long Wear, but they're still very good and they leave a very nice photo friendly finish on the under eyes. Concealers for the face, I really only have one palette. This is the MAC Pro Conceal and Correct palette, and this is the one that's got the lighter shades, um, NC15, W10, NC20, and W20, pale yellow and pale pink. It's got some corrector shades on the bottom. I use this for concealing the face. I do not put this under the eyes. To me, it's way too dry and can be way too cakey. Um, and I also use my Graftobian palette for the face. So these are the two concealers that I use on the face. If I find that I don't have a dark enough concealer in my palettes, I will simply spot correct with more of the foundation that I used. That works fine and you don't need a ton of extra concealers for the face because I find that that almost can look more natural than using a separate concealer on blemishes and problem areas. So just a couple of like separate kind of, not random, but things that I carry in this bag that also have to do with your base. And this is the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer, and it's just a really pretty, this is in color two, it's a really pretty champagne color that I like to either mix in with my foundations to make them luminous and glowy, or um, put under foundation. It's kind of like the strobe cream that I mentioned in my prep video. Um, it kind of serves the same purpose, or I can just use this as a liquid highlighter and apply it to the high points of the face. These I featured in my last haul, and I think they're absolutely necessary. They are the NYX foundation mixers. This is another reason why I don't think you need to go out and buy every color of every foundation, because you can easily buy a few of these and mix them with foundations and create your own color. I carry white, deep, and olive. This seemed to work perfectly for any um, need that I may have in making another color. Thing I have in here is the Farsali Rolls Gold Elixir. This is a, it says radiating moisturizer, but it's a gold infused beauty oil with naturally pure botanicals. I don't think you need to go out and buy this one per se, but I do think you need to have some kind of beauty oil in your kit to mix with foundations, to um, mix with creamers, put them, not creamers, thinking about coffee, obviously. Mix with um, concealers, you can put them directly into a concealer or a cream contour palette, and it makes the creams easier to blend and pick up. 
Um, it's just an all around good product. You can use it as a moisturizer. You can spot moisturize if you have really dry patches. So I think everybody needs some kind of beauty oil and this is just the one that I have right now. And one other random thing that probably should have gone in my um, base video or not base video, this is the base video the prep and prime, like prepping your skin video, but it can also be mixed in with uh, foundations, is the Clinique for Men Face Bronzer. This is a gel bronzer and I love it. If you're working on a man, I put this down every time before I put foundation on a man. They just tend to catch the light different than women do and all around have bronzier skin. So I always like to put this on and it's also great for women um, who maybe have like a very strong spray tan and you know that foundation is just not gonna match it. You can set the face to begin with and kind of prep it for the foundation and have it be a little bit bronzier. So I do carry that in this kit as well. That wraps up everything I have in my foundation and concealer slash base bag. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know and let me know what you want to see next. You know, I'm kind of thinking what, what else do you want to know? What else do you want me to film about in this series? You know, some people ask for me to film a school series and I mean, I guess I still can, but it's so like, it just depends on the school and I hate to film something completely about my school because your school and your area might be completely different. So it's hard to it's hard to find a reason to do a whole video on that, but if you really, really want it, I will. Always thank you so much for watching and y'all have a very blessed day.